Hello, friends! So, Bible study, the NIV, uh, John chapter 6. We're going to do 1 through uh, 21. Um, but we're, we're going to also pause in between. So, uh, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Some time after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. Uh, and a great crowd, although I might be pronouncing that wrong, it's got an A-S, not a U-S at the end of it, and, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. So, you know, he's roaming around the the various uh, towns healing people and, like, camping out in the wilderness with his friends, and they're just, you know, he's gaining a crowd. Uh then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples because, I mean, come on, it's got to be exhausting to be followed around by people all the time. Just think of it like, you know, celebrities who have to deal with the paparazzi. Wouldn't that get annoying? I mean, I think it would get annoying. I would just like, get people back up off me. Uh, so the Jewish Passover feast was near. So this gives you a context uh, for the time of uh, year it was. Because this would uh, near um, would put it sometime in in what we would uh, in North America would see as March or April, because the Passover feast is the same same Easter weekend. It's the same. <laughs> those two, the Last Supper was Passover Seder, so those two things are together. And the, the Passover Seder isn't just any old day of the week. So. Um, When Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd coming toward him, because it's like, damn, they found me. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread uh, to feed these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Because in compassion in Jesus. Philip answered him, eight months of wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Because 5,000 people is a lot. Another of the disciples, Andrew, uh, Simon Peter's brother, which always is just like, why do they do that to Andrew? How come he's always just Simon Peter's brother? Why isn't he just Andrew? Spoke up. Here is a boy with uh, five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how many, well, how far will they, uh, will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed it amongst those who were seated. Uh, and those who were seated had as much as they want. He did the same with the fish. Uh, when they all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered uh, them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over from those who had been eaten. After uh, the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing what they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Because he doesn't want to be their king. So, he's like, no, 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 that's not what I'm here for. He's got a specific destiny and that kind of thing. You would have to think of that as it's a potential temptation. So, kind of like the one ring sort of deal. You intend to use it for good, but it would not come for good. He has a specific thing that God has told him he is supposed to do. So, he's focused on that specific thing. Now, it's the feeding of the 5,000. And it's just like, remember though, the backbone of all DNA, human, animal, plant, doesn't matter. Same five elements. Now, there are other elements, obviously, in our body than those five elements, because this is just what makes up DNA. 
you start getting into uh, molecules of amino acids and proteins and lipids and fats and all kinds of stuff where it comes in like, I know chemistry is not everybody's favorite subject, including my own, uh, but organic chemistry is kind of necessary for you to have a fundamental understanding of how you should be eating rather than all these random pieces of advice. Each one of those things does a different thing for your body. Like there's a lot of talk about balancing your hormones and everything. Well, you got to balance your insulin. Your insulin tells your estrogen, your testosterone, your progesterone, a bunch of other things what to do. Tells with sugar what to do. So if you've got any form of, of diabetes, your first job is to feed your insulin receptors. Not just take more insulin into the body because we're, you know, that you need a prescription for. It needs to be monitored, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm not telling anybody to just not do what their doctor tell them to do. But the omega-3, 6, and 9, get you a vitamin where they're all put together. That's what feeds your insulin receptors. I mean, this is a journey I'm personally on because uh, it runs in the family. And I am pre-diabetic despite a very healthy lifestyle pattern. So... He takes this, remember all those molecules to get back on track, they're all, they're all similar. And he can see them just as he turned the water in the wine by like spinning it. He's just taking this and expanding things that are already there. He's twisting the molecules and anything around it to make it be more and more and more and more and more because he can do that. Because he can just change the molecular structure of anything he's touching. That's part of how he's healing things because he's clearing away and he's praying and doing it. I mean, he's not doing it just on his own. He can only tell you that repeatedly. He can only do what God has empowered him to do. That's why the faith of it matters. You have to believe he can or there's not enough generated energy for him to change it. The next thing is, this is 16 and this is when we'll do till 21. Jesus walks on water. When the evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into the boat and set across uh, the lake for Capernaum, uh, a Capernaum, you know, where, they, where most of them are from. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three or three and a half miles, so I go, okay. <laughs> they saw Jesus approaching on the boat, walking on the water. And they were terrified. I don't know that I would be terrified. I think my response would be like, dude, how'd you do that? <laughs> but he said to them, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat. And immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Okay, so instantaneous travel. Now that's that's like. Did he make him any wormhole? Did he make a little? Because you know, we only know about wormholes in space. But I mean, he made some kind of portal in in order to do that. I mean, that's that's you know, I mean, that's pretty much what's going on. Even if you're watching the Harry Potter, if you're in, I'm like I'm all over the Kinkos here. But so uh, I'm like I'm a Ravenclaw. In case that. It's not apparent to anybody who likes Harry Potter. I'm a Ravenclaw. They, uh, if you think of what it, when they apparate and disapparate, when they're just sort of popping in and out of existence like that, um, how would they do that? How would they do that? Would be like like we get to see in the sci-fi world where they go into the wormhole, or you know, in the Star Wars world where they're in hyperspace. So either you're moving faster than the speed of light. Good luck with that. Uh, or <laughs> you're traveling through a wormhole. I mean, uh, scientists today will tell you that we, you know, like we can't really move. We don't have, we don't have, there's not a fuel so source strong enough on Earth that can make us move faster than the speed of light. But portals, opening a door from one thing to another, well, you know, people pass into heaven and stuff, so... Clearly, portals are in existence if you believe 
that people go to heaven. If you believe in heaven, if you have any of that, clearly there's port energy portals so it's somewhere. So you're taking them through an energy portal. But the walking on the water, that's very interesting, right? Because there's these interesting qualities to water when you start getting into the the actual science of it. And they're uh, the oxygen in that process, because remember, it's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in this molecule. And what tends to happen, because the oxygen is, is so uh, negative in, uh, in, in the... Um, well, just in its molecular charge with the electrons, especially after it's made a couple of covalent bonds to uh, hydrogens, is that it'll tend to stick to surfaces and creates this sheet on the top of water that is not really like any other element. And it's really happening because it kind of concaves. Um, we'll use my coffee in the cup for an example. Okay, so... You see how it looks like it's a little higher here along the edges? That has to do with how the water molecules bond. It's actually holding on to the cup and then the rest of the water kind of goes down into a concave. Now you can have it in the other way, but that takes different sets of, of conditions. In average, this is the what it is. And this type of membrane it almost creates across the surface of that water it makes it like a sheet and that is why like when it gets really cold in cold weather states and stuff because this is in arizona we don't get ice it's like not like from the, from the freezer but no not really much of anywhere else uh like sometimes up on the mountain they get snow but they uh the ice doesn't just fall to the bottom of the lake and it just creates stacks Which is good for, you know, the fish that have to live in the lakes. Otherwise, they would die. Like, they would not, nothing would stay alive down there in the, in like, the, well, the ocean is just in constant motion because of the moon. Uh, but, but in still water things where it's not in constant motion, it, the reason they don't die is because the ice doesn't just fall to the bottom. The ice uh, stays, like, floating on that top because it's coming into contact with that that membrane that's just naturally there that membrane that's there but it's not there it's why leaves float on the top and they don't sink to the bottom you know it's what it's what you're seeing gets disrupted when you're skipping a stone and it's you know it's making that ripple effect so he has found some sort of way to walk on that surface to make himself lighter than the tension of water. Now, this is a person who's half DNA, it's half Holy Spirit, and he's upping his light quotient, so he is, his mass is apparently something he can control. He can make himself have more or less mass. Because that's the only way he can do that, to walk on that, that tension of that surface. He has to be able to raise and lower his mass to be lighter than the surface tension of water. I find that scientifically very interesting. I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible because there's nothing impossible and I'm a believer, but <laughs> that's just like, wow, how do you do that? 